All right, Friday night, a long week at work. Being an electrical engineer, it's a struggle at times to get shit to work right. But this is uh, this is my work number two, and uh, I actually enjoy it. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. Um, yeah, so I bought these. I've had them for like two years. Never even test fitted them. So guess what we're doing tonight? We're gonna test fit these mirrors. They're still freaking brand new. Like I said, I bought them like two years ago. And because I had a feeling they might be discontinued, so I bought them. Let me uh, let me install. Them, see how they look. Actually, <laughs> sorry about that. My apologies. And they're genuine too. Yep. How do you guys like them? <laughs> I mean, yeah, they put it on the car first, but yeah. Ta da! Alright, so let's. I just put the spoon mirrors on, test fitted them. They look pretty good. Hang around, I'll, I'll show you them in a couple minutes here. Uh, but this video is, uh, I'm just doing this a lot for myself, and I'm doing it for all the newcomers to the channel, so that uh, maybe you didn't scroll back far enough, maybe I didn't, I don't know, I can't remember how I explained this, but uh, this is going to be the design purpose of this car, okay? So, for me, the purpose of this car had to... Well, pretty much uh, it was still for me, but uh, it had to fulfill three things. One, stand the test of time. Two, look good, meaning it's probably going to be like a hot rod. And three, it had to be fast. Okay, I mean, fast is a relative term. Okay, let me explain that later. So let's go back to number one. Number one, it had to stand the test of time. Standing the test of time, to me, means a lot of different things. It could be a collectible. It could be a record breaker. It has made historic, you know, events. It's got things under its belt that other cars can't claim. You know, things like that. It's grabbed a chunk of history, something like that. It's won awards is another good test of time. So... For me, I don't know if I'll ever win an award. I don't think this car will ever win like a racing championship, nothing like that. But for me, that objective for me is uh, the ability for the car to still be uh, reviewed by my peers and by myself, more importantly myself, that it's still a good car, a badass looking car. Uh, once it turns into a classic, you know, 10 years later. Uh, it's, a, it's a 99. It'll turn into a classic in, you know, maybe not too long. <laughs> it won't be too long anymore until it turns into a classic. Uh, but anyways, you know, once, once, once it's done, say, say the day it's done, 10 years later after it's done, it's still a badass car. It has stood the test of time. And to, to make that even more refined for a definition, it to me is more of a... You know, you have a really rare car. It's more of a collectible than anything. And that's that's what I'm kind of going after. Uh, something that's rare, not a lot of people have. Um, yeah. That's why some of the parts are chosen. And that's why the build's done this way. Number two will be uh, a hot rod. Or a, it's got to look good. So uh, it's got to have a little bit of that hot rod flair and taste to it. You know, hot rod meaning um, shaves, shave moldings. You're keeping it clean as clean as what the Honda community <laughs> always says. But that that word in the beginning days means completely different things than now it is. Okay, so when I say clean, I mean uh, no bondo. It's all metalwork. It's all welded. You know, things are put there properly. Uh, strain relief is a big thing. And things are properly mounted. Okay. Okay, so you guys know what I'm talking about. Things are properly built, properly screwed down. No random wires flopping around. Okay, that, that to me is properly built. 
bling, uh, hot rod status. Wire tuck is like a good example of that. A wire tuck, uh, purpose built parts, uh, eliminating parts because you don't need them. Yeah, yeah, like like getting rid of the AC compressor. That's that to me is like a you know like a hot rod. They don't do that stuff. Power steering deletes stuff like that. Although I'm thinking about putting electric power steering in there. I'll let you guys know what I decide later. Uh, let's see. Number three is uh, it has to be a fast sports car. Okay, there's sports car and then there's a dedicated track car. We want to be a fast sports car. Okay, fast sports car meaning, well, in 2018, a fast sports car. If you're gonna reference quarter miles, you're talking 11s. That's a fast sports car. Like factory trim, fast sports car, 11s. If you're in the high 12s, it's pretty respectable. And that's kind of the goal I'm shooting for, high 12s on street tires. Yeah. I don't know if we'll do it. But we'll try. And the other thing is, what makes a fast sports car is, it's also its looks. It's got to look It's got to look good. Every No one's ever sold an ugly sports car, okay? So it's got to look good. It's got to feel like... Oh, when you look at sports cars, it feels like it's a wedge cutting through the wind. You know, that, that type of, of uh, a design. Or uh, it's just got to look good. It's going to sound good. It's going to be properly put together. You know, the whole, the, whole, the whole eight yards. Not the nine yards, the whole eight yards. Because uh, it'll be fast, but I don't expect it to win events. You know, because I've been in the motorsports world, and I know the rules... You know, rules dictate what you put on your car. And this is not the case. You know, the, the parts I picked uh, are parts that satisfy my hot rod needs on the car. For the most part. Okay, for the most part. So, uh, a little bit of background on myself. You know, I'm a, you could say I'm an electrical engineer slash computer science slash um, motorsports enthusiasts, you know. Uh, I love Gran Turismo. That's the only reason why I bought a PlayStation. Uh, one time I was ranked real, real high. Real high up in there, but that was after like two weeks of nothing but just playing Gran Turismo. But anyways, you know, a lot of, the, this build is going to be influenced a lot by the motorsports world. So, a lot of it will be, a lot of people might ask, you know, why'd you pick this part? And if you follow motorsports, you've already, you would have already known the answer. Like, for, like for example, the tires, right? The tires in the car. Three years ago, the Desiris Z2 Star Specs. I think that's what they're called. I can't remember it too long. Been out of the game for a while, you know. Those were the number one street tires. Number one street tires. Better than the Bridgestones. Better than Federals. Better than better than anything street tire wise. 200 tread wear it it was awesome it was awesome the reviews on it great i've owned a set before of my friends have owned sets of these tires everyone just gives a rave reviews it's a little on the hard side you know it rides a little hard but on top of that grip is grip is phenomenal for a street tire so you know some things like that so if you knew you follow me follow the motorsports world uh one time I was I had a sponsorship through Honda Performance Development uh, because I was doing the autocross stuff with my Honda Civic. Actually, this car I transferred that. Remember, I transferred that sponsorship to this car. I did. I did transfer that sponsorship to this car. Yeah, so it's a HPD car. <laughs> although, although I, it's it's probably no longer sponsored. I haven't submitted my uh, race results. You know, for the. For the season <laughs> so i'm no longer on there but if you look me up hpd I'm, I'm sponsored this vehicle is is sponsored maybe back in 2000 maybe 2006 i don't know 2006 2007 maybe that that time frame back it was, it was a while back no, no, no hold on 2000 probably 2012 13 14 this car was listed under hpd so yeah so that's how that's how much motorsports I like and the influence of motorsports on this project. So that's <laughs> if you if you look, there's famous names everywhere. Okay, you know I picked these parts because 
these are the these are the brands that support motorsports. Okay, these are the brands that I like. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not really more I'm not really a lifestyle brand person. I'm more of a motorsports brand person. So, uh, with that being said, if, if 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 Company A supported motorsports, and his parts are twice as expensive as Company B, who only supports the lifestyle of cars, you know I'm buying this guy's parts, assuming they do the same thing. Okay, so. And I don't like I don't like counterfeit stuff. That's 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 just I'll go to the ends of the world to uh, to bring you down if you uh, you attempt to sell me a counterfeit part. Um, let's see what else I got. Mm. But I, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, it's kind of like that. So yeah, basically the car the car has uh, three goals it needs to hit. I've just explained those three, and I'm working my way slow up there. Uh, and the reason why it's taking so much time is uh, the car, the ideas I have for the car, or I've planned for the car, there's a lot of big speed bumps in the way. Actually, not speed bumps, walls in the way. Okay, walls. So I have to learn how to weld is one thing. I learned how to weld. got to learn how to weld. I didn't know how to... I didn't know anything about engine management, okay? So, went down to Dallas, you can reference my old videos, took a class at EFI University, and came back and made a decision on engine management at the time and what I needed it to do and things like that. Do I need nitrous controls? Do I need PWM for wastegate controls? You know, do I need this? Do I need that? And it turns out, AEM won the battle. So, I bought the AEM EMS Series 2. Uh, it's not even, it's, I, I have it, it's never been installed. I saw it, yeah, so I, I do have a bunch of parts that you get to never see. Put it that way. Uh, so that, that's one good example. Welding's a good example. How to do that. Painting the car, good thing my brother knows how to do that. Because that would be another third wall I would have to jump over. Um, but a lot of fabrication stuff too, like brake line bending flare and stuff out stuff like that I've never done before so there's a lot of that stuff that I'm trying to do and I'm trying to keep it like built by me as most as I can I'm trying to like have people I don't want to ask people for help unless if I absolutely have to and the biggest hurdle right now is building the turbo manifold the turbo manifold to me has been something that I've been thinking about for a long time and I want a, I want a somewhat equal length tubular manifold that can fit over there with the turbo I have. And then I'll fab, I want to fab everything else too. Like I want to fab the intake, the intake pipes. I want to intake, I want to fab the turbo boost pipes. I want to fab the down pipes, the exhaust pipes. And I have a really unique idea on the exhaust too that is, is definitely not off the shelf. If you guys pay attention to this channel long enough, I might just build it. Um, full three inch all the way back titanium muffler. Uh, we're, we got an idea for a diffuser design that I came up with. I mean, my brother came up with five years ago. It looks freaking sweet. Gonna redesign it. Give it an update. Uh, front. Okay, let me spill the beans on this one because I haven't seen anybody do this yet. But the front bumper, hood, and fenders might be one piece. I'll just, I'll just give you guys a little tip right now. Might, might not. Might, might not. Depending on how hard it is. And, uh, yeah, so that's a little insight to the future, stuff that I'm thinking right now. There's a lot of stuff that's in my mind that I don't want to kind of put out there yet because I don't want anybody to copy it, um, but a lot of cool stuff in my mind. Um, well, anyways, you guys want to see some cool stuff? That's why you're here. Let's look at check out the spoon mirrors. Enough of the, enough of the theory. So this is the spoon mirrors. Okay. Looks really good though. I must admit, like this is one of the reasons why I like the motorsports world. They're the only ones that are willing to to go out and make a better product after the after the car has left the factory and performance products too. You know, because these these the OEM mirrors they look like crap. I'll be honest, I never liked them. Never did. Pacific ones look look even worse. Look like Mickey Mouse ears. So basically, the spoon mirrors come in. You got three bolts, comes right through, and you got the pigtail. 
but it doesn't come with a connector. I don't know why. For six hundred bucks, I think it was six hundred bucks. Should have came with a connector. So basically, you can take this, plug right into this, and just electrical tape it, or get your old mirrors and de-pin it and put that in the your old connector and then plug in, which is probably what I'm gonna do. So that's the spoon mirrors. Kind of look at it from an angle. And everything is not painted. Not painted, kind of looks like crap, but here's the other side. Okay. Oh yeah, auto power road cage too, sitting in the corner. But it looks good though, that's all, that's all I gotta say, you know, so. So anyhow, uh, check out the channel, uh, to look at all my old videos if you want. Sub to this channel, click the sub, click the bell button. I'm trying to upload every week. I've actually did a real good job this week, I uploaded three times. So, yeah, sub to the channel. I'll let you guys know what my thoughts are. And well, the other thing is, let, let me know if you guys like this type of video. Uh, the video where I talk concepts, I talk about design and things like that. Because, like I said, not a lot of people do it, and not everybody's going to like it. So if everybody doesn't like it, I probably won't do it no more. But if you like this uh, format, let me know. Okay? So we're we'll working on it the integral a little bit more. And maybe I'll blow another video in a couple of days. <laughs> All right, see you guys.